Hello everyone, this is part 6 of Human Capital Education chapter and in this part we will talk about an example of signaling model of education. So this example is from the book. So we're going to assume that um, Q is the proportion of people that are low skill. So it's between 0 and 1. I don't know, it can be 0 0.6, but we're not going to assign a number value for now. But it's just Q is the proportion of people who are low skilled and they're going to be paid $200,000 a year. We also have high skilled people, so 1 minus Q, if Q is let's say 0 0.6, so 60% people are low skilled, and 1 minus 0 0.6, 0 0.4, which is 40% of people high skilled and they are going to earn three hundred thousand dollars so we can tell right who is high skilled who is low skilled so we're going to use education as a signaling equilibrium in this case we don't have a college education like college versus no college kind of dichotomous choice in this case actually each year of education is counted so my bar is the minimum years of college to be considered high skill so it's even uh, one more count like one by one years of education accounted in this model okay so why is the minimum years of college to be considered high skill so cost of one year of college for low skilled individuals is 25 and one thousand uh, dollars twenty five thousand and one dollars and college education for high skilled people is lower at $20,000 per year. So pooling equilibrium means uh, everybody is, we don't know who is who, but everybody is paid the same. So then we have to figure out who is uh, high skill, who is low skill. But because we can't do this, we are paying the expected value of the skill. So pay everybody the same regardless of the skill level because firms can't tell. So every salary is going to be Q, the proportion of low skilled people times what they bring in, 200,000. And that's their value marginal product. And 1 minus Q is the proportion of high skilled people times what they're paid. So Q times 200,000 plus 1 minus Q times 300. So from here we have 300,000, right, minus... You can distribute this over this parentheses minus 300,000 Q. Okay, so we have 200,000 Q from here. So it's going to be 300 minus 300 plus 200, 100,000 Q. So this is how much you would pay. This is how much you would pay an average worker. Okay. So Q, it depends on Q, the proportion of people in the population. You can plug in whatever the Q is, proportion of the low skill people, and then get a monetary value of average salary. Let's take a look at the signaling equilibrium, separating equilibrium. Uh, it's very important because we're going to pay different groups differently. So we are going to do exactly the same thing we did in the previous part, remember? Uh, we are making, in the signaling equilibrium, we are making uh, high productivity workers to go to college, right? In this case, we want to make sure the dumb ones don't go to college versus smart ones to go to college. So we found the uh, interval values for cost of college. It's a little bit different here, but the idea is the same. So we are going to design a mechanism, determine the years of college requirement where high skilled people will go to college and low skilled people don't choose to go to college so college education will be working as a signal for ability so low skill if they don't go to college they uh, earn two hundred thousand dollars minus the cost of college is zero so nothing if they go to college they're going to be paid three hundred thousand minus they're going to be paying $25,001 per year of college, whatever that's considered high skilled. So you want low skilled not to go to college. Therefore, this $200,000 needs to be greater than $300,000 minus 
$25,001 Why? So if you rearrange this, you move this 200 to the other side, you have 100 on the right hand side, right? I move 200 to the right hand side, it becomes negative 300 minus 200, it's 100,000. And I'm going to move 21,001, 25,001, I said that wrong. Y bar to the left hand side, the negative sign becomes positive. So divide everything by 25,001, you're going to get Y bar 3.99 years. So to, to have the separating equilibrium. We found that minimum years of education to be considered high skill has to be greater than 3.99 years. So let's take a look at the choice of high skill people. No college, 200,000. They earn no college education uh, cost. If they go to college, they make 300,000 minus Y bar is the years of education necessary times 20,000 per year. That's the cost of their college education. So I want high skill to go to college. So I want this one to be greater than 200,000. So you want high skill to go to college. So 300,000 minus 20,000. Why I want it to be greater than no college 200,000. So if you rearrange this, you're going to have this 20,000 Y bar on this side, just move it to the other side and send 200,000 to the other side. So 100,000, it's 20,000 Y bar. If you do that, you get this 20,000 Y bar. It is going to be less than 100,000. So less than five. So what's the interval of values for Minimum years of college to be considered high skill, it's going to be less than 5, but greater than 3.99 years. So, if Y bar, minimum years of college to be considered high skill is greater than 3.99, less than 5. High skilled people go to college, low skill they don't. College can signal ability, you can get a signaling equilibrium. And this concludes our example. In the next part, we're going to talk about some educational facts. We're going to talk about which theory wins in real life. Uh, and really, we're answering the question, are we just born smart or not so smart? And college just works as a signal? Or does college really increase our productivity? I'll see you in part three.